Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is a reaction to why we don't build beautiful buildings anymore. And to be honest, I don't know if that's necessarily true. We definitely, st some countries still definitely build nice or beautiful. I wouldn't describe it as beautiful, but like they they look nice. Like, you can't go wrong with a skyscraper. Like, you'll look at some parts of Dubai or some like major areas in China or like, like I don't know what the main areas are called, but like, Chicago is where like all the skyscrapers are it looks it looks like to me it looks pretty like crazy and it's so fascinating how just there'll be so many big buildings and a lot of them will be a lot newer so I mean that's one sort of thing I'll take from it but I do also understand that like when you go to somewhere like for example when I went to Venice the difference in like in terms of just like how how historical the buildings were there's a fascination to it, but they are also so beautiful. Obviously, some parts aren't so, but like, there's definitely a thing on both sides where you can say, yeah, okay, it looks more beautiful when the buildings are older, and it looks a lot more, I don't know, developed if they're newer. I don't mind when it's a bit of a mix, to be honest, but I feel like people are sometimes against that because, mess, um, specifically in European cities, yeah, like. A lot of people probably just want to keep the history, which is also fair enough. I completely understand that. I like a bit of a mi I like a bit of a mix. Obviously, when it talk when this is talking about old buildings, I don't think it's talking about like churches. It's just talking about old structures from like maybe how they used to be built like a hundred years ago, two hundred years ago even. But we're gonna see. Hopefully, we're going to enjoy. Links are in the description to my Patreon. And yeah, let's jump into this and see why they aren't built beautiful anymore. You're walking around downtown among the beautiful historic buildings. Each of them is unique with different colors and ornaments. You then turn a corner and oh, it's one of those newly built areas full of sterile. <laughs> what? See, I don't. When they build these sort of new buildings, I don't have a problem with it. I know some people do. Like in certain parts in London, is it? I don't know what the word is. Like where they're just making stuff nicer and like they're replacing it with other stuff. Like stuff like this, when beforehand it would just it would either be nothing, or it would be abandoned building, or it would be just old apartments. I guess maybe if it's old apartments that people still live in, I do understand if they've changed it. I don't know if they legally can, but um, I mean, it looks to me this doesn't look bad. Obviously, they could be nicer than this, but nondescript boxes. Gone is the charm, the atmosphere, mm, and the character so of the lively, historic downtown. It's all a sterilized cultural dead zone. You press on and eventually reach. The I think. I'll be honest, I think this doesn't look that bad in terms of, in actuality, I think it looks pretty good. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. It looks quite clean and it makes it look a lot more fresh. The office area, which is even worse. Even the meager... <laughs> That's what I was saying I like. I find this fascinating as well. Individual characteristics of those new residential blocks are gone. It's all just a bunch of glass cubes. How depressing. That's it. I can't take this anymore. I need to go to the store to get myself up. Oh god, wait a sec. You know those old beautiful market halls people used to shop in? Well, now it's all big metal boxes. <laughs> to be fair, in my city, we still have a few of these type types of things. What are they called? Parades? Is that what they're called? I can't remember. Um... We still have like one or two of these, so we're not fully developed yet. People used to shop in. Well, now it's all big metal boxes. What is going on here? Why do all new buildings look so bland and depressing compared to the old ones? How come we don't build quote unquote beautiful Convenience? buildings anymore? Probably. Let's find out. The story begins in the late 19th, early 20th century. Architectural styles like neoclassical were still widespread in the developed world, but a new movement was emerging. Modernism hit the architectural scene. Its main tenets are minimalism, the rejection of ornament, and the idea that form should follow function. Ah, so that's why we don't build nice buildings anymore. Those stupid, talentless progressives back then came up with their stupid, soulless architectural style and forced it upon the world, so now all new buildings are ugly. Right? No. It's a decent plot for a Disney movie, but reality is a bit more complex, I'm afraid. See, modernism came about in an era of technological revolution. New and innovative building materials like glass and steel and reinforced concrete enabled buildings never before seen or even thought possible. Examples of modernist architecture include the Sydney Opera House, the Empire State Building, and this little-known landmark called the Eiffel Tower. A big part of the reason why modernism got so popular is that after so many years of dominance by the old, people were simply ready for something new. Instead of stuffy, stuck-up, over-decorated buildings, we had falling water, 
Villa Tugentat, Palais de Chaillou, the Rockefeller Center, and a whole lot more fresh and modern buildings. You wouldn't unironically put on this 17th century outfit for your job interview, would you now? You will go for a relatively minimalistic yet elegant suit or a dress because, well, because 17th century garbs just aren't a thing nowadays. The idea is the same with building ornamentation, changing tastes throughout the times. However, there are some additional, far more interesting reasons. And before we get into those, I'd like to thank Athletic... Get in this money, you love to see it. Secure in the bag. And now, back to the video. So as we discussed, a reason why buildings nowadays have less ornaments is changing tastes throughout the times. Now this is all well and good, but it doesn't explain, say, Soviet apartment blocks or similar large-scale public housing. Virtually nobody finds these buildings good looking or interesting. So I mean, I, d I, I don't, I don't, I'm not against it though. I think they make areas look nice, especially with what they used to be before. It depends where it is, obviously, but I don't know how these sorts of buildings will look in like 20, 30, 40 years time. Are they the sort of buildings that will look terrible in that sort of time frame? I don't know. Maybe that'll be the case and then, then maybe we'll look back. I'll, I'll look back and be like, okay, yeah, these weren't good because, I mean, when you look at apartment buildings now that were built 40, 50 years ago, they don't look very nice. I don't know if that's because of just how they were built and they were never actually looking that nice, which some of them definitely didn't, but... Yeah, I mean, maybe I'll look back in a few years' time and be like, okay, yeah, maybe it wasn't a very good idea, but I don't see anything that looks terribly wrong with, like, this one in particular. So there must be something else in the background other than changing tastes. There is an idea in far-right conspiracy circles that actually modern architecture is a plot by the shadowy elite to crush the spirit of white civilization so they can import non-whites into developed countries to dilute the culture and the white gene pool because of reasons. And this might be an interesting plot for a South Park episode, but as usual, reality is a bit more complicated. Do comic blocks and similar large-scale public housing projects look sometimes bland or uninspiring? I mean, this looks bland. That does look quite bland. Sure, but they weren't built as a form of architectural expression. They were simply not made to look beautiful. In Europe, following World War II, there was a massive housing crisis basically everywhere, so states set up massive public housing programs. In the Soviet sphere of influence, this was done via so-called house factories, where they mass-produced standardized elements that workers could what? put together on site, thus massive amounts of housing could be built at a low cost relatively quickly. Wow. And it worked. Comic blocks essentially solved the housing crisis. See, what would we prefer, this or how it is now? Come on. And for a time anyway, they also represented a civilizational shift for their new inhabitants who often moved in from buildings without electricity or indoor plumbing. If you want to know more about comic blocks, I have a whole video about them. Feel free to check it out. So next time you hear someone say that public housing apartment blocks are a communist plot to crush the human spirit or something, well, being homeless or not having access to running water are perhaps bigger threats to the human spirit. Who knows? Also, imagine if some local government spent its public housing money on ornamentation instead of building as many units as possible. Hello citizens, we only built 7 blocks out of 10 due to higher ornament costs, so hundreds of you will not have a roof over your heads, but hey, look how beautiful these 7 blocks are. Now you'll have something nice to look at from under the bridge. So there's our second reason why we don't always build nice buildings housing shortages. But this still doesn't explain this latest onslaught of same looking buildings in the US. This isn't just the US. And Europe. Okay, Europe as well, yeah. I mean, you do get this, that is for sure. But again, I don't think, I think this looks quite nice. I'm going to be honest, this building here does, I mean, some of the other ones, like, when it's making them the same, Still right? doesn't explain this latest onslaught of same... Like, it does seem a bit utopian. It, I do get that, and I mean, maybe in terms of, it's because I'm used to this or whatever, because this is sort of like the era I'm growing up in, and this is how they're making buildings. But, I don't have much of a problem with it, as long as it's not the whole city that's like this, it's just certain areas, but I guess, like, when they're building new, like areas for people to live in or like they're building up new neighborhoods like in the uk they're well in Nor the city that i'm from they're constantly building new like areas a bit further out from the city so i guess they're expanding the city slowly and it's all like new builds so it looks completely different but i i don't really think it looks that i, I don't mind the look of new builds i mean it's, they're all same looking and the whole area looks pretty samey but i'm just i don't really have a problem with it but again, maybe it's one of those things that's because I'm used to it and it's just what I've grown up on. But maybe my parents would be like, oh, that is not nice looking or whatever. But And I grew up in a city, on a street that's been there for hundreds of years. But the houses, I mean, they're different colours and stuff. It's like there's all different, all different colours. But 
they're all like the same size and all that sort of stuff. So I mean, it's just the difference in like materials used for it. Of same looking buildings in the US and Europe. Such buildings are absolutely everywhere and spreading. They're bland and boring, uninspired, depressing and so on. Though to be fair, the US is more affected by this than Europe. So why do developers keep spamming these buildings? It's not like they're part of a massive standardized public housing project. We're living under neoliberal capitalism, which happens to be the reason why those buildings look the way they look. You see, from the late 20th century onward, housing was increasing looked at not as spaces to live, but as commodities to be bought and sold. This culminated in the 2000s housing bubble and the consequent 2008 economic crisis. People simply stopped planning for durability, quality and proper aesthetics. Just get the cheapest materials you can, put up a building that looks reasonably nice and sell it at inflated prices. Due to their low quality construction, the buildings would start falling apart in a few years, but it doesn't matter since by then you'll have already made your money and the building would be on its seventh owner who is looking to sell it at an even higher price. Housing went from places to live to a speculation scheme, a hot potato match among investors, but when the music stopped, everyone went bankrupt. Aside from outright speculation, there is also the good old-fashioned profit motive. Let's take a developer who wants to put up a new building to rent or sell the units. Suppose we present them with architectural templates. Neoclassical, Art Deco, Baroque Revival and the average 5 over 1. 10 times out of 10 they'll pick the 5 over 1 and ignore the rest. Why? Because it's the cheapest, ergo they'll make the most money with it. Turns out 5 over 1s are built using standardized materials that can be mass produced, keeping costs down. Even if the quality is questionable, well, it only needs to hold together till the end of the warranty period, then it's the new owner's problem. Or in case of renting, developers can just keep blaming the tenants for defects and deduct repairs from their deposits. A developer- so That's what I'm so worried about with my apartment, right? There's these little things like- the cut that We came to this house and it was pretty much busted up anyway, but- just small things like the fucking uh, like the curtain here is just it's not right and they're probably gonna fucking make me pay for that all the carpets were already they already had some sellotape on it so the carpet was already like like on one section of the, of the carpet in my living room there was sellotape over it just to sort of hide it i don't know it wasn't even stuck to it that well and now more of the carpets fell apart and it's not like i'm doing anything on the carpet so it's just like oh god i'm not gonna get my money back and that's a bit fucking worrisome but Probably all part of the money-making scheme. You could spend a boatload of money on a durable, brick neoclassical apartment building with tons of ornamentation, but that won't affect the rent or unit price all that much, since the three most important aspects of real estate are location, location and location. If you are a developer building units in a desirable location, as long as the units are mostly habitable, that's all you need really. You'll have made your money. The story is the same with office buildings and large shopping centers. As we do not mass produce classical ornaments, they would need to be custom made for each building at prohibitive costs. But how come companies don't want to build something representative still? Why aren't, say, Walmarts built nice like those old market halls? With that, we arrive at the fourth factor. And what would that be? Recently, the beautiful Art Nouveau facade of Prague main station was renovated. The station regained its former splendor, but almost nobody noticed, because no one is there to see it, because there is an urban freeway and an elevated parking lot right in front of it. If you want to experience the facade's architectural beauty, you have to crawl through dark, piss-smelling underpasses and grimy, rusted spiral stairs and stand in the middle of a concrete parking lot next to an urban freeway. Oh, beautiful. Anyway, hardly a conducive environment for savoring the arts. Car-centered areas actively sabotage architectural beauty. Why why would anyone bother building something good looking or waste money on ornamentation when no one will be around to appreciate it? Even if you build a good looking Walmart that isn't just a big metal box, who cares? People will just park their cars, scurry inside, do their shopping and then drive away. Nobody stays around True. to stroll, to talk, to hang out, to take in the beauty around them. What good is a beautiful building when your city is built for cars? Cars don't appreciate architectural beauty, people do. But for that, they have to be around. And if roads in your city look like this and sound like this, Nobody will stick around. In I feel bad for the people that have to live next to these highways and stuff. That must be so damn loud. In which case, why even bother building anything nice? Aside from urban motor traffic, parking minimums are also to blame here. Those old, atmospheric, human-centric, beautiful areas would be illegal to build today due to parking requirements. The current laws in much of the world actually prescribe car-infested cities and force developers to build a ton of parking for new buildings, which then induces even more car traffic and drives up construction costs. Thus areas become congested, thus there will be less people hanging around, and suddenly you don't need to build anything good-looking anymore. People will be looking at the road in front of them, not at the buildings. And even if a 
developer wanted to pay for ornamentation despite everything, well, unfortunately the underground garage they were forced to build due to parking minimums ate all their ornament money. But hey, at least Karen can comfortably park her Resvani Vengeance SUV equipped with bulletproof glass, explosive underbody shield, electrified door handles, built-in pepper spray and a loudspeaker. So to answer the question of why we don't build quote-unquote beautiful buildings anymore, and by that people colloquially mean ornamented pre-modern buildings, the reasons we've pinpointed are as follows. Tastes changing with the times, sheer necessity to house people, housing becoming a commodity instead of places to live, and car-centric urban planning. So next time you see a new quote-unquote ugly building, you'll know why it's there. No conspiracy, just tastes, necessity, capitalism or cars. And this is not to say we stopped building nice things. Beauty can come from places other than ornament. Take the three biggest stations in Budapest, Keleti, Nugati and Daly. Keleti and Nugati are beautiful, but so is Daly, just in a different way. And personally, Daly is my favorite of them all. Anyway, there was my excuse to talk about rail. Thank you for watching. If you appreciate my content... Damn, well there we go. Um... I, I don't I, don't, I like, obviously older buildings there's definitely more to it right I, I wouldn't say I prefer newer builds like there's something so fascinating about going to like historical cities with the buildings and stuff but at the same time I don't really have a problem with the new builds either because I think it does look nicer than a lot of the older sort of apartments or flat blocks that we have in the UK or homes and stuff it's yeah I mean if they do it right it's good if they do it wrong it's not so good but um that's that. Hopefully you found this interesting. Let me know your thoughts and until next time, peace.